Well, first of all, that's a bit of a mouthful and I apologise, Yvonne. Um, so, look, how close is he? The fact is we've seen China put up a space station in two decades. Um, we have seen billionaires go up in the world's biggest willy waving contest in the last year alone. Uh, we've got Blue Origin teaming up with Boeing. We've got Sierra Space. We've got a whole bunch of people throwing money at this. Uh, and launching in the next five years to ten years, by the end of 2020s, it's a huge effort. And a, a few things have to go right and they have to be to schedule in order to achieve that. Uh, you've got Boeing, they've been working on their Starliner spa a spacecraft, a spacecraft got my own starters today, uh, designed mm -hmm. for human transport. <laughs> and Sierra Space have a program called G Dream Chaser, which they, it's a winged space plane. It's going to do the cargo, uh, and that is scheduled to start cargo flights to the ISS next year. Uh, you're also looking at Blue Origin's rocket, which is called uh, New Glenn, and that's actually going to be doing all of the launching, and that hasn't even really, uh, so to speak, get off, got off the ground yet, um, even though we've seen, you know, Blue Origin's New Shepherds go. So, um, look, it's a huge effort but judging by everything else uh, I, it could be possible I mean we're just really starting to enter that amazing exponential growth and development in this commercial space area so I wouldn't be surprised we really have I've seen so many strides being taken massive strides just this year alone so I don't know I guess I guess we will wait to see watch this space but do you think this is to rival the International Space Station what's its main purpose this new one so that's a, a really good point as well. Uh, it, it's yes and no, okay? Uh, rival is probably the key word here. NASA are actively uh, engaging people to try to find uh, replacements for the ISS. Now, the ISS has had permission to operate until 2024, uh, permission uh, with funding extension taking it to 2028. It's old. It's two years old. It's costing NASA, you know, between three and four billion dollars per year just to operate. Uh, and of course, you know, taking, uh, the Russians are taking up the, the US astronauts and the other astronauts up there at the moment, and, and they're paying for that as well. So eventually NASA actually wants to send its astronauts to uh, these stations that they've sort of had a, had a hand in. So they're kind of encouraging uh, this commercialisation, this making of space stations. And in fact, uh, Blue Origin and, and partners are not the first people to come out and say, this is what we want to do, we want to build it. Uh, and NASA have announced these initiatives called the Commercial Low Earth Orbit Development, or CLD program. And it's about $400 million of funding through between two and four Space Act agreements to fund these studies of these space stations. So it's just the last one. Uh, uh, and there have been two really big names that have been before that, Axiom and Nanorax Lockheed Martin. So, um, you know, watch this space. Um, mm. But in terms of what it's there for, um, well, her Blue Origin say that it's, uh, it's, it's open to anyone, customer or nation. It's providing an address on orbit and catalyzing the growth of a vibrant <laughs> space ecosystem. Now, if I'm going to translate that for anybody, I would say, look, they're looking for people to get out there, do new tech. Uh, find out how to build things in space, for example, do science experiments, chemistry, biology experiments, looking at humans and how they go in space. And of course, that big one, tourism. Mm. I love checking in with you now and then, Claire, because there's just so much happening in this industry. What has NASA's Juno mission found out about Jupiter's atmosphere and its great red spot? Oh, this is a great story. So for me, this is just one of those things where science just keeps giving, 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 giving. Juno is this cute little spacecraft actually launched way back in August in 2011. It spent five years just getting to Jupiter. And then in the last five years, it's been dipping in and out of Jupiter's atmosphere every 53 days. I personally would find that very tiring. <laughs> um, so its aims are to basically look at Jupiter's atmosphere. We can't see below these beautiful clouds. Of course, we've got these white and brown streaks and, of course, this iconic red spot. And, you know, we can see those things, but they're largely a mystery. Um, we also don't really know how it formed. And until we can sort of peek below those clouds, so to speak, we can't really test our theories of planetary formation. We want to know what's there, what's the, what are the clouds made of? of what's underneath Jupiter's clouds. And so that's what Juno's been doing is dipping in and out. Um, this great red spot is iconic. 
uh, and it's possibly been seen since the 1600s, but scientists aren't even sure about that. And it's been shrinking over the past few years with a series of flaking events. So little pieces of the red spot have been coming off. Uh, and Juno has been looking underneath the atmosphere um, in microwave light, which goes through these clouds and actually gets a look underneath. Um, and then it went in 2019, it flew above the red spot. And what's really cool is that NASA has this thing called Deep Space Network. And it's a series of three huge radio antennas on Earth. There's one in California, one in Spain, and one in Canberra. Yeah. And all they, they watched Juno, yeah. And so when Juno was flying above the red spot, they were detecting changes in velocity of Juno due to the gravity of the great red spot, about 0.1 millimetres uh, per second changes in velocity. So super, 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 like tiny changes that we're detecting. But essentially, it looks like the red spot goes a lot, 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 lot deeper than we thought, um, between 300 and, 300 and 500 kilometres deep into the atmosphere, and it doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. Uh, and some other news is, well, we're going back to the drawing board. Um, we don't really, like we see these clouds, we've looked underneath them, and there seems to be this abyss the clouds end and suddenly there's this abyss and we're like wow we didn't expect that there must be some sort of ammonia mixing what's going on so the ramifications are it's back to the drawing board wow tell us about another of nasa's space probes too lucy it's come across some technical issues i understand yeah, so Lucy, a great name for this uh, spacecraft. It's actually named after that famous fossilised skeleton you might remember of a, of a human ancestor called Lucy, which helped us understand our own evolution as humans. And its job is actually to go and to look at asteroids, um, primarily um, the Trojan asteroids. And they're, they're a group of asteroids. One sits before Jupiter in its orbit and one sits afterwards. And they go around the sun with Jupiter, sort of buddies. And they sit there in this stable place because that's kind of gravitationally where the sun and Jupiter balance out and so they're kind of safe these these um, asteroids and Lucy's going to have a look at these asteroids and these asteroids represent some of the most primordial material the the rubble left over from the construction site of the solar system um, but what's happened of course no mission is without drama Lucy got up there that she left um, and what actually happened was uh, went out to, if you ever have a look at Lucy, quite cute, got this little silver beak in the middle and two enormous owl eyes, which are these solar, <laughs> uh, these solar arrays. Now, one of those actually didn't unfurl properly and they've done a bunch of tests uh, and it's between 75 to 95% not um, fur opened, it's opened. Um, and they're not sure what they're gonna do about it yet. Uh, they could potentially leave it like that or they might have a chance to uh, redeploy that that solar um, array to see if it'll open again. Fascinating stuff. I'm sure they'll get it fixed if that's what they need to do. Hope Claire so. Kenyon, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Yvonne.